Hi, in this video we're going to create a layout for our uh, math quiz app. So I'm going into Android Studio and I'm going to create a new project. We'll call this thing Math Quiz 2 and choose Next. I'm going to leave the uh, Android Studio at API 14 and choose Next. We'll pick a blank activity or empty. We'll leave main activity as it is and click Finish. And so the application will begin to build. So you can see we have our new project open. We have activity main and mainactivity.java. So you notice in the Android 3 that the default layout is called a constraint layout. And so we'll be working with constraints in this video. The first thing we should do is delete this uh, text view that says hello world. And so we have just a blank activity. <clears throat> Now I'm going to pull over here a design that I'm going to build. So this is a Word document with a screen capture of the final product. You can see here that I'm going to create a few buttons and we have a layout. We have lots of different uh, view controls. So we'll be creating all of these in the uh, upcoming minutes here. So to get started, I'm going to put a new button on the center of the screen. And so it's just a gray button. This will eventually become the start button. Notice we have a warning that says this view is not constrained. It will jump to the corner 00, zero at runtime unless you add the constraints. So this is telling you that uh, constraints are important in how you set this up. So that's a big point of the video that we're doing here. Let's see how these constraints work. If I were to run this program now, you would see exactly as the warning tells us that the button jumps to the top left corner, which is 00, zero on the grid. So let's go back into our design view. I'm going to click in the top center where the little anchors are and as you drag out you notice you get a green arrow. That is a constraint. So if I drag it all the way to the top edge the button will jump to the top. So it is constrained to stick to the top edge of the uh, layout. I'm going to grab the same button in the bottom center of the of the object and drag to the other end. And so now we have uh, corresponding constraints. So it's like two slinkies that are pulling equally on this button and it ends up being in the center of the screen and so that's how you center an object is you put a constraint to the left and to the right or to the top and the bottom so let's do a constraint to the right and then pull an equally opposing uh, constraint to the other side and so now with four different constraints all pulling in opposite directions the button ends up in the center of the screen let's go check out the text view to see what that looks like so you can see we have a button object now in our XML file. And if we look down at the bottom of the item, we can see that there are four constraints. So they are labeled as constraint bottom, and uh, then we have a constraint start and end, and then another one constraint top. So you can see that it's labeled there to say that the uh, items are being pulled in those four different directions. They're all being pulled toward the edge of the parent. So the top, the bottom, the left, and the right. The parent is the enclosing activity edges. So let's switch back into the design view now. Let's run the program again this time. And uh, let's see what happens now that we have four constraints. So the button should move from the top left, and it should be in the center of the screen. And it certainly looks like it is. OK, select the button again. Now, over on the uh, right side, you can see all of the properties of this button. Now, I'm going to scroll to the bottom, and I want to simplify this view. So there is an item called View Fewer Attributes. And now you have a little grid that shows a graphical view of what these constraints are. So you can see the width of the item. You can see the uh, margins around the edge of it and some other properties as well. I'm going to set the top margin here from 8 and let's change it to something else. Let's go bigger, like 32. And you notice now that the uh, item is being dragged closer to the bottom. Let's bump it up to a big number, like 100. And you can see that the margin is set toward the top, and then the leftover space is split between the, uh, the uh, constraints. Let's change it back to zero. As a matter of fact, I'm going to set the margin on all of these to zero. There's really no need to have a margin when we're already pulling everything to the center of the screen. Let's bring back the uh, design plan that I have in mind. 
So we have this Go button that's supposed to be uh, in the center of the screen. What else can we do with it? Let's go check out some of the properties here. So first of all, the text. We can change it to the word Go. Let's go look at the background. We can select a color here. So if we click the ellipsis and then choose the color category, we should be able to choose, choose something here. So I'm going to pick a green color. Let's play around with the height. So if we were to select this uh, again and look at the layout width and height, right now it's set to wrap content, which will be just large enough to hold the word go. You can also change that by uh, these uh, little chevron symbols and it'll add a actual number of DP. So uh, density pixels is what DP stands for. Let's push it up to 180 and see what that looks like. So 180 by 180 and we should have a square button. Let's go check out text appearance. Text appearance allows you to change things like the text color. So if I want my text color to be white, uh, I will browse and find a white color and choose OK. So go is white. We could also make the text bold. Can we change the size? It looks like we can. We can put the size up to something larger so it looks big and easy to read. Okay, let's go back and look at our design again. We're going to put a few more things on this uh, page. These uh, text items up at the top, top are called text views. And so those are controls that we'll put in there. So we need three text views. And it looks like we also have a other item called a progress bar. So the progress bar is going to be used as our game timer and it will show how much time has elapsed. So we're going to spread these text views out evenly and let's see how that works now. So the first thing I want to do is go look for the control called the uh, progress bar. So widgets and progress bar horizontal seems to be the one that matches. So let's drag him into our layout. And we need to set the constraints for him as well. So the same warning appears that says, hey, you have no constraints on this thing. So once more, I'm going to drag the edges to the left and to the right. So we have uh, opposing constraints, so it's centered. Let's go check out to see what the text view says for XML file. And you can see that it says we've got our uh, constraints here for the end matches the parent and the start matches the parent. I'm going to add another constraint here. I'm going to type in layout underscore constraint and I want to choose the one that says the top will match the top of the parent. So it's a little hard to drag those arrows sometimes. It's easier to edit the XML file directly. So now it should be stuck to the top of the screen and centered. Now let's change the width. Right now it's set to match content. I want to match the parent, so that way it fills the entire width of the page. The progress is the value of how much time has elapsed. I'll just put in 45 for right now, and that will give us a little red line to see what it's supposed to look like during the game. I'm going to select the text view, view uh, item and drag him in near the top left corner. Remember, it doesn't stay here until we put the constraints on it. So let's uh, do a few property modifications on this text view. First of all, I'd like to see the size of the text a little larger, so let's set it to 24. And now we can see what we're doing a little better. So we'll put a left constraint on and a top constraint. Now I want this top constraint to touch the progress bar, not the edge of the screen. So I'm not sure if I'm getting that or not. It's really hard to see it at times. So I think that's the best I can do. Let's go check out the text editor and look at the XML file. What happened here? So it says here that the constraint, the top of my item is to the top of the parent. I didn't get the uh, one I wanted, so let's delete that. And let's manually type in the constraint. So I'm going to type in top and search for the top is matching the bottom of another object. And the object I want is the progress bar. So the top of the text view matches the bottom of the progress bar. And you can see this curved line now is showing me the uh, constraint relationship here. So it is touching the progress bar. Now the margins. I don't need margins again here, so I'm going to change those from 8 to 0. And so that'll get up close to the top as possible. Now it's time for another text view. So 
Maybe you can put one in the upper right corner. Go ahead and try to squeeze it in here. I'll show you how I'm going to do it. Uh, let's drag a new one out and I'll go through the same process. So let's change his text size so that way we can read the text easier. And then I'll put the constraints on it. So the right constraint goes first, so we drag to the right edge of the screen. The top constraint I want to match with the progress bar, so carefully see if I can get that to touch. Doesn't look like it's working, so let's go into the text editor again and see what the top constraint is. So it set it to something called an absolute Y value. I don't want absolute Y values. Uh, they just, um, they're not relative to anything and they don't work on different size screens. So let's, let's get rid of that and manually type in the constraint. So I'm going to type in layout and look for the one that says top of the item to the bottom of another item. And I want to set it to the bottom of the progress bar. Now we need to go to the center. Let's put another text view item in the middle. Let's change his font size again, make it large. And now I'm going to set the constraints. So I'm going to take the left and join it to the right side of the first text view. Let's see if that worked. So it says the start goes to the end of the first text view. So that seems to work. Let's drag the other way. So let's make a constraint so that the right side matches the start of the third text view. Okay, so now the top. Let's see if we can get that to uh, work like we want. So I'm going to drag the top constraint up to the task bar, up to the progress bar. And it seems to be not quite right. It wanted to go to the top of the bar. So let's delete that and retype it again manually. So I want the top of this control to match the bottom of the progress bar. So let's see top matches the bottom of. That's the one I want. And then I want progress bar. Well, it looks like I have an extra text here, so delete that and away we go. And let's look at the design. It seems to fit. Now how about the top margin? We probably need to get that out of there, so let's go to zero for the top margin. And I think we've got ourselves a uh, working layout. This is pretty much like I want it, so let's run it and test it out and see how far we've gotten in our layout. So as I look at the preview of the app, it looks like everything's in place where I wanted it. So pretty good progress here. So maybe that's a good point to end this video and we'll continue on in the next one.